Radio Crusader. It's time to kick it with some chew bubble gum. And I'm all out of gum. Welcome back, everybody. It's Freddie Mac, your ham radio crusader. And we're back with another video about some enhancements to your All-Star Link version 3 node. So, Jory, W5GLE, over here at his GitHub, has been hard at work with what a repository he is calling ASL3 scripts. And what this does is give us some enhancements we've seen before, if you've been on ham VoIP. So, think back. Remember Supermon 2? This is my Supermon 2 on one of my repeaters in Preston, Oklahoma. It's a node that I have not yet converted to ASL3. It's handy to have a ham VoIP around for reference to other things, but it soon will be converted to an ASL3 repeater. But if you take a quick look here, in Supermon 2, you had your weather and node information. You had your weather and node information inside the node table. And you had an alert here telling you if your Skywarn Plus was enabled or disabled for whatever reason, and the, the alerts that you have there as well. And of course, the node tables are centered. I always liked that about Supermon 2. Well, in ASL3, we can't get Supermon 2. Now, Jory approached me and said, hey, what do you want new for ASL3? Because he's one heck of a Linux uh, programmer. So I thought, you know what? I'd really like to have Supermon 2 back. And he took a look at it, took a good hard look at it. And he said, well, you know, that's quite a chore for just another dashboard. What is it about Supermon 2 that you would like to see in Supermon 7.4? And my biggest response was this node table information and any other enhancements he could think of would be just dandy because I love a good, nice looking dashboard. So not only can we get this in Supermon 7.4, boom, that's it right there. We've got our menu centered now. Our node and weather alert information is inside the node table of both nodes if you have more than one. And what's this down here? Ham clock, what? Yes, you can run an instance of ham clock on your, on your All-Star Link 3 node. Now, I got it to run on a Raspberry Pi Zero 2W, but wow, it really bogged it down. So I would suggest maybe a Raspberry Pi 3, 4, or 5. Your choice, have fun with it. So how do we get all this done? Well, let's head over here to Jory's GitHub, github.com slash hardenpenguin slash ASL3 underscore scripts. This link will be in the description. And we've got to go down the line because you can see here how he has his. And you can set this at different resolutions. So we're calling the first one Supermon 2 Mod. So we're going to download the script. We've SSH'd into our terminal and we're going to stay in here as a user and paste the wget so we can pull the supermon2 mod down and there it is then we have to make it executable and mind you this is for all star link 3 only now it's executable and now we will run the script Now, as soon as it starts, it needs some information from us for the weather information. So it needs your node or node number or the node numbers, depending on how many you have. This instance is 577883 and 1999. I have a private node in there as well. And it wants your zip or airport code. I'm gonna put in my zip, city and state. And I'm going to leave the temperature units at Fahrenheit because that's just how I roll. Uh, the master enable alert INI and warnings file are settings for auto sky. We're not technically using, but we are. Those paths are in there for a reason. So I would leave those at default. Control X, yes to save, enter to exit, and boom. It's added our cron tab entry for us. And the cron tab entry is set to update every three minutes cleaning up the patch file, patch files cleaned up, script completed, yada, yada, yada. Let's go to the browser. Now we won't get a response until that three minutes hits. So we're gonna stay right here until it does. And boom, you see now that the weather and node information is inside the node tables. But it's kind of hard to see, isn't it? We're going to get to that. This is just as a quick stop on a journey 
to a much better Supermon 7.4. Okay, now that we've got what we wanted from the old Supermon 2 into Supermon 7.4, I like to make these tables centered. And I like the ability to change these colors, which we can already do, but I'm gonna add my own little flair to this as, as you've seen before. And Jory is working on that as well. He's coming up with some really nice customized looks for the Supermon. And it just boils down to changing your supermon.css file. So I've got an example. So we'll go into the terminal and we're going to clear the baffles here and change our directory to var www.html uh, slash supermon and take a look in there and we'll see that we have a supermon.css file. So I want to back that up. So I'm going to move it, aka rename it. So let me do a sudo mv supermon.css and we're going to rename it supermon.css.old. And now you can see there it is right there. And now we need to download the other. So let's go sudo wget. This is the modified supermon.css file from my GitHub. And I'll have links to Jory's as well. It's been a lot of fun getting really customizable stuff onto our supermon. So we're going to download this supermon CSS file. And there it is. And now you can see supermon.css is back. So let's go up to that browser and refresh it. Hey, look at that business, y'all. Woo wee. Yes, our menu up here is centered. Our buttons are centered. And our tables have weather node information in them. So real quick, I want to show you how you can change these colors. They're in a different place than in the supermon.css. So we're going to go back to the terminal and we're going to clear the baffles here real quick and we're going to change directory to user a local sbin. We'll take a look around and you will see the AST node status update.py. So we're going to sudo nano AST underscore node underscore status underscore update dot py. And boom, there is a nice big file. Yes, and sure and read all of this. All of this is important. But I happen to know where the spot is that I want to change because Jory pointed it out for me. Okay, so it's up here in the get auto, auto sky alerts line, the def get auto sky alerts. If you see the word right here that says spring green, I like that myself just to be green so I changed it to just green control X yes to save enter to exit come back up here and refresh the page so after we change this file we have to run it again and we can do that with a sudo period forward slash AST node status update.py and it's been updated and now you can see Skywarn Plus is a green and not a spring green. It makes it easier for me to see. But you're going to change these colors to whatever you like in the supermon.css file. So now we've got this node information here. And we've got everything centered like we like it. And we can log in real quick. Login succeeded, it says. And see all our buttons and all this stuff here is all centered. And all this is here where it's supposed to be. Isn't that wonderful? Spinny's even in the middle now. Pretty good stuff, right? So let's log out and let's go back to Jory's uh, GitHub here. So we've done the Supermon 2 mod. So now the embedded ham clock support is on deck. So what it says here, this script enables ham clock to be embedded in Supermon ASL 3 plus. Note, it does not install ham clock, just patches it into Supermon. If you need to install ham clock first, visit our dedicated install ham clock repo. So we're going to visit that one first. Let's get ham clock installed into our Raspberry Pi node, our all-star link node. So the first thing we're going to do is get to CD squiggly. Boom. And then we're going to download this script to get ham clock installed. And we probably should put a sudo in there first. 
run it as user and boom there it is and then we're going to make it executable uh-oh so I got to do sudo boom we're gonna run this as user so that's the best way to do it now let's run the script so let's change it to sudo Oh, I'm sorry, not this time. It has this run it as regular, not root. There's a reason for this. I just don't know what it is right now. So let's that let's let that install. Okay, it stops here and it says the script will install ham clock on Raspberry Pi OS. Proceed? Well, yeah, that's what we came here to do. And then we can find a transcript of the install installation at that, that path that you're seeing there. Your path will be named a little bit different because it went into my home directory. Now it's installing required helper packages. This could take a little bit. Okay, so now it's getting ready to build the display part of ham clock now when it said installing required help of packages that took quite a while now we're on a raspberry pi 3 i did it before on a raspberry pi 0 2w it took a while so let it finish don't give up on it it could take 5 10 15 minutes just let it go nonetheless it says build for web access only no hardware display so what that means is I'm going to access the ham clock display through a browser. I'm not going to plug in my TV monitor into directly into the Raspberry Pi. So I'm going to hit yes here. I don't know what will happen if you build it for a hardware display to plug a TV into with the Raspberry Pi with a All-Star Link node attached to it. I don't know how that's going to react. So I only do web access only. So I'm going to hit yes, hit enter. And now it wants to know a resolution. I'm going to go big. Last time I went 1600 by 960, and that's pretty nice. But I'm going to go with a bigger resolution and just try 2400 by 1440 and see what happens. And it's building. This will take a little while as well. Okay, once that's finished, it asks if you want to start ham clock automatically each time the Pi is booted. I'm going to put yes. So it added it to the cron tab. So it says ham clock installation is complete. You may now run ham clock by typing ham clock. So now it's starting ham clocks. Ham clock is running and we can access it via this IP address. Now this is my local IP address. If you use port 8081, it's the read write version so you can make changes. But if you do 8082, it's just read only. But we want to do the 8081 first so that we can set it up. So it's 1.77. So let's open a new tab. 192.168.1.177, I think it said. Nope, just 77. So and we want to do 77 colon 8081. So it'll do that port. And it wants to do for the file of live.html. So forward slash live.html. And we'll hit enter. And here is the setup portion of our ham clock. So first thing it wants is your call sign and grid square. I think if I do this, mine is EM25AK. It'll put the Latin lawn in there for me. Or I could use these if I wanted to. The national time protocol, I think that is, is built in. I'm going to leave that at built in and hit the right arrow on page one. So it'll go to page two. If I want to include clusters, I'm going to change that to yes, but I am not. Page three, and these are for uh, like FL rig and some other choices you want to do on your ADIFs, ADIF watch, if you want to set that up. Page four, map, center, longitude. I'm not exactly sure what these settings are. I'm not that familiar with ham clock. Now here are some particulars on the way you want things to look. I like to set mine for month, day, and year. My week begins on Sundays, but my system of units is imperial i like to see my public ip address and you can spot labels with prefix the call sign or none i like call sign you can use dot as well 
scroll directions, bottom up, plane rotation. You get the, what I'm going for here. So I like to see the gray line. Log usage, I've opted out for this. Just This is just a bunch of settings that you can customize for yourself. And I like auto upgrade myself. Around 3 a.m. ought to do it. Page six, bunch of different colors you can set the way you want them. And if we hit that, it should take us back to page one and we can hit done. And it'll take a second to build everything. Countdown and boom. It will display our ham clock. Now, for some reason, mine's in black and white this time. I don't know why. It was probably one of the changes that I chose. But, you know, you can come back in here and click on the screen do some visual settings, and I'm sure there's a way you can customize and get back to those settings and do them again. I'm not gonna cover that here, but we've got ham clock installed. So, let's go back to Jordy's instructions. This is where it said, hey, this is only to embed ham clock into your Supermon, you have to install it first. Now we're done installing it. So now we can go back to the node and install this embedding feature into our Supermon. So we're back to that. Let me clear this out. We're in the root directory. We're back to our node. So we're going to go to part two of Jory's ASL scripts, and we're going to download this script by typing sudo wget. Got that. We're going to make it executable. Oh, we got to do sudo. And now that is done. And now we can run it. Okay, applying the patch, it succeeded. If you see it right there, it says hunk1 succeeded. That's good. That, meant, that means it, it went through. It shows our public IP address. It modified our supermon link.php and successfully replaced an entry called your public IP with my public IP address. And it'll do it with your public IP address. So it says ensure that port 8082 is forwarded to your ham clock's device IP address. So like this is IP uh, 77 minus 192.168.1.77 for this particular node. So I'd go to my home router and I would port forward port 8082 to 192.168.1.77 so that I could reach it from outside of the network. And you might wanna check the firewall in ASL3 to see if 8082 is open. That's something you may want to consider. This is done here. Let's go back to our Supermon page and refresh it. All right. Now you see that this window popped up down here, but it says refuse to connect. Well, I don't think I have that port opened up for this device. Since I have more than one ham clock going on my home network, I have to change this to my internal IP address. But if you don't have any instances running, as soon as you refresh it, it's going to look like this. So there you are. Supermon 2 like display in the Supermon 7.4 dashboard and ham clock on your All Star Link 3 node on the Raspberry Pi. How cool is that, y'all? So have fun with it. Check it all out. Links are all in the description. Everybody, if you have a chance, reach out to Jory, W5GLE. He has done some amazing things for All Star Link and Ham Radio through Linux. The power of Linux. It's a wonderful thing, y'all. If you uh, have a chance, reach out to him. I'll put links to his GitHub page in here. And Dad Gummit, come over to our Discord server. He's there all the time helping people out. We appreciate everything he does. Hey, folks, this is Freddie Mac. I hope you got something great out of this video. I hope it, it helps you move forward in everything amateur radio and All Star Link. Have some fun with it. This is Freddie Mac, your ham radio crusader, saying 73s, wishing all the good signals to be yours, and ham on, y'all. Yeah.